Some of the best software and robotic engineers in the world met on the DARPA Robotics Challenge Trials on December 2013 to show who is the best. And with these videos, you can see they had no easy job. The job to successfully complete a different tasks related with saving lives in difficult environments, like the Fukushima disaster, which was, by the time of the competition, hiding homeless to work in the cleanup of the mess. That's how important the challenge is. The funding from the United States will hopefully help Japanese homeless people in the near future. The eight tasks were driving a car, walking on rough terrain, clearing the bridge, climbing a ladder, opening doors, making a hole in a wall, using a hose, and turning a couple of valves. Although we may kill the surprise here, you can see the final scores, as you may not really care because usually no team rings a bell. The qualification score to make it to the next year finals was 9 points. Many good teams were left out. Watch out for the names and the robot they use. And yes, although the competition is from the US, the winner is Japanese. The competition had mainly US teams using the Atlas Human Age robot built by Boston Dynamics. The teams could customize their Atlas robot, but mainly their job was related with programming. Some other teams used their own designs. For example, here you have the HPRP2 Evolution from the team Shaft, this so not flipping a finger in the stake while opening doors. Team from the Carnegie Mellon University crouching here to save some obstacles using its threads. Also Robosimian from the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, which we may see in Mars someday. And DRC Hubo from KAIST, a small sized humanoid who did very well in the ladder test. There were many other robots, but more remarkably one colored tour that almost qualified for the uh, 2014 finals. At the end of the competition, several teams were recognized for their great achievement in individual tests. In the vehicle test, the Oscar went to Rex, which was the last team to qualify for the final the next year. The vehicle test was not the most interesting test in the challenge. Some years ago, the DARPA Grand Challenge did some amazing achievements in this area. So this time, driving has to be done with, uh, had to be done with a more or less normal car meaning no dozens of sensors in the structure, just the vision you have from inside the car. The course was linear with six curves and for the robots it was quite complicated to keep a good angle of turn in each curve. Of all the Atlas robots, only the Worcester Polytechnic robot was able to accomplish it. Kudos for that programming and path planning algorithms in that case. In the upper part of the video you can see the team members that are mostly monitoring the evolution of the robot although some remote intervention was allowed in a limited bandwidth connection in some tests. Here you have the winner in that test. The second test saw the robots walking through rough terrain and here the Japanese team from Shaft performed very well in a walking pace and equilibrium work of any non tipsy human. Its huge arms were not a problem and it kept going in a fast pace according to current robotic standards. The Atlas robots had a rougher time with this kind of tests because of their haze and also the chimp robot had issues due to his threats. The first um, part of the terrain was plain but the end of the terrain was quite difficult because robots had to be careful not to uh, lose balance. Your shaft is about to finish. The robot, as we said before, is based on another robot called HRP2. You can look it up in Robotic Spot. I have an article about it. It has evolved a lot in the last 10 years or so. Robots go very slow, as you know, and most of the time you see a video on high speed. Sometimes it's two times the normal speed, sometimes it's even 10 times. Oh, talking about Chimp. 
Uh, the debris test was supposed to be the coolest from a spectator point of view, and it was quite visual indeed. Uh, it did not let us down. You see Chimp in this video? He gave us a lesson on how to retire all the obstacles like a boss. In fact, the three first qualified robots performed quite okay in these tests. And kudos to IHMC for being able to use an atlas efficiently in this task. A very high robot with a very low target is always a challenge in combination. The door test was not very visual, but it was really interesting to see how robots tried to open them at the road, the doors, enough for them to pass. The doors were the self-closing doors types uh, you had to turn a given amount of degrees for them to stay open. And also the wind and vibrations of the scenario played a role in the outcome of the test. For example, in this video it's very high speed. Let's go for the stairs. Here Chim was going to have a lot of problems. It was kind of obvious due to the threats on the structure. In fact, the public was looking like how the hell is he going up with the threats. Some minutes later, he turned his feet upside down and placed them on the stairs, but with cool results. The Japanese shaft also did not have the best structure for this kind of test, but, but even enough, even though it got to the top. In fact, the best performers were uh, small humanoids like Kais, which almost qualified for the finals. A Yushi Chim trying to climb, but in the end he could not be able. Um, here you see Geist, that's a Hubo robot doing very well. You see him well, maybe the, the only method that really worked very good in this test, which was turning around and walking backwards in a very stylish manner. It was not very fast, but it was very reliable, and that's the most important part part of the tests. One question that you may have is, does he go down by himself? No, the team uses the poly to fly him down. It's not a plane or not a bird, it's a robot going down. <laughs> it went up to the top. If you say garage, it means they had different garages, boxes, places that you could uh, they could work with the robots. So they were numbered, and there was a lot of public in the event. In the world test, the Atlas from the IHMC outperformed the rest of the teams. The target was to make a hole in a wall, a small hole with a human-like tool that looked nothing like a gun or something you could use in a wall. Yeah. The Atlas from the Florida was the, the best performer in this test. Here is digging, digging the hole. And the bulb test was simple, but a little boring. Turning bulb seems not to be the next extreme sport. Here you can see the again the Florida Atlas robot. Uh, no, in this case it's the mid robot turning a small bulb in the left. All the Atlas look like, so it's quite complicated. You have to look at the stickers. And for the last, the host test. This is the DMI2 robot again. Although this although this test sounded pretty cool. Your result to be boring like hell and left clear how difficult it is for robots to handle close combat scenarios with a small round objects where stereo vision was not very efficient and where the grasping mechanism without force feedback was not enough to know if the nozzle was in place or not. In fact, uh, sensing skin and glove like human interfaces could, hip, could be of use for those tasks like turning or coupling the nose. Almost uh, all of the teams went into semi-manual mode with using joysticks, PlayStation controllers, uh, prompt commands, whatever to get the host nozzle in place, and almost none did successfully. Here are the MIT engineers trying to get it in place, but it falls to the floor. So the DARPA Robotics Challenge Trials ended and 8 teams qualified for the finals that will take place in December 2014. We hope to see you there, and if you cannot, be sure to follow the stream online. Thanks a lot.